Hi, everybody. This is Kathy L. Murphy, the Pulpa Queen, and I'm reporting live from the University of Texas Robert M. Muntz Library here in Tyler, Texas. I've gone back to graduate school and they have excellent internet. So I'm like pumped that I have not had I don't think it'll go out on me. It's been doing really well since I've been here. I'm about ready to throw the ghost at my little cabin in the woods because it doesn't work at all there. So I do all my homework up here. So tonight we have James Conroy Martin and he has the most beautiful book ever. It's called Too Soon the Night. And this painting on the cover I just found out from him is in Brazil in a museum or gallery, museum? Museum. James? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're going to talk to him about this. this is the novel of Empress Theodora. It's the Theodora duology book two. And I'm going to do something different tonight because whenever I have somebody on, I've, I read this quite some time back. So I decided that I would just kind of refresh, you know, some of the things I was learning or remembered. And I want to read just something that will get everybody wanting to read this book because it is so fantastic that I just go, wow, what, you know, they always say the very first sentences that you do in a book get you hooked. Well, listen to this. It's uh, 28 June, 548 CE, Constantinople, the Great Palace. Her sacred resplendency, the Empress is dead. Theodora, daughter of a bear keeper, actress in living pictures, lover to many, concubine to Hesebolus? Hesebolus. Hesebolus. Oh boy, you're going to have to help me. Supporter of monophysitism, advocate of women's rights, wife and equal partner to power Emperor Justinian is no more. On the day of her death, a Sunday, I was called to the women's quarters of the imperial apartment at Emperor Justinian's request. What could he want with me, I worry, as I leave my suite and make my way up to the floor above? I find the emperor is overtaken with grief. His face is red. His eyes are wet. Um, he is, they're little more than slits as if he's been trying to shut out the world. I bow. And he moves toward me with such a look of familiarity that I think for a moment he means to embrace me. He stops a pace away. Emperors do not embrace eunuchs. Ah, oh, Stephen, he says, you must do your lady one last favor. It is for me too, this favor. I have no words and not a clue as to the meaning, uh, meaning of his, his flushing. Her woman, her women are dressing her now. He pauses, pivoting slightly, averting his gaze. And after a long moment, he turns back. Have hidden gray eyes, hold mine. You loved her too. Do not imagine I missed that. Not from the start when we, you brought us together a bit reluctantly. His eyes are pooling. Now hold out your hand. I obey. He places in my hand a needle already threaded with translucent thread. I am so ashamed, Stephen, I cannot will myself to do it. With his head so low that his chin touches the top of his rumpled purple tunic, he hurries from the room, tears giving way. And so I am left to perform the task only a loved one is allowed to do. I'm holding my own hot tears at bay and shaking like a sapling in a storm when I screw up enough courage to go to Theodora's bedchamber to bind her mouth close so that her soul would not escape into the night. I mean, if those aren't the most, I mean, everybody's going to go, what's going on? At, what's happening next? How long did it take you to write this book? It's written so beautifully, James. Um, it's, the, the, you know, the first of all, just learning the history and the pronunciations of all these characters. And you have a wonderful glossary at the end of the book that, you know, um, talks about these characters and everything. How much research, because that fascinates me. Uh, much, <laughs> much. And <laughs> it, it's, it, it started, you know, a half century ago, basically. Oh my so, gosh. So I've had a lot of time. Um, uh, um, when I was 
<clears throat> when I was taking, when I was working on Push Not the River yeah. in the 1970s, um, uh, we got it out. I got an agent right away. She said, okay, you've got this much written. Let me send it out, Push Not the River, and different title. And um, start something else. Well, I was taking a, uh, a, a art appreciation course at a community uh, college in uh, in Hollywood, California, because I had gone there for screenwriting, and that got shuffled to the side, you know, with pushing out the river. Anyway, um, so um, at at the course. Um, we were studying mosaics, and the professor, uh, uh, professor had the Justinian and uh, Theodora mosaics up, and everybody's ooing and eyeing over them. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them were saved in Constantinople, you know, which became Istanbul. But the ones in, uh, I think, it's San Vitale in Italy were were saved. Right. And those are the ones that we we study. Um, are you able to give me share shareability here? You know, uh, I know there is a way to do that, but I haven't done it in so long. I can't remember how to do it. Um, oh. Why don't, let me, well, just keep talking and let me just see if I can figure out okay. how to do that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. So the, the professor said, um, this is the woman when we saw uh, her particular one, uh, this is the woman I would write about if I were a writer. Yeah. And uh, so it went on in my head, you know, okay, I'm looking for a subject. I'm going to uh, check out um, check out this woman, Theodora. So I, I yeah. went down uh, Coinga Boulevard to uh, the Hollywood Public Library, the extension of the, the big one. And I took out every single book on Rome at that time, and Constantinople, and, and wow. uh, uh, Theodora, about 11 or 12 books, and hauled them wow. back up up to my apartment a few blocks away, and a wow. little garden, garden apartment, uh, uh, and... Uh, and those are heavy books, I'm sure. Yeah. Lugging them up, okay. So a week later, the library burned down. <gasps> so do I have those books still? I'm not saying. <laughs> well, we won't. Uh, we won't ask. I think you may have told me this before, but probably. you know, you save those books, okay? You save yeah. them. Yeah. So. You know, they, they had the old fashioned cards you put in and, and mm -hmm. you get stamped the date and all that. Um wow. so you know, this was before computers and I had access to that kind of research. So there, there was a lot of research that, that went into it. And, I, and um, um, you know, it, it took years to push Not the River to get published. And when it got published, I, uh, I got one of the top agents and a different agent then in New York and St. Martin's Press bought it. Wonderful publishing. And um, so I figured Theodora would be my second book with St. Martin's Press. Uh, but they had they had their own ideas. They wanted a, a sequel to Push Not the River. So I had I had to put it aside again. So, but they have beautiful covers too. I mean, you have definitely you must have learned something from art appreciation. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, with their first cover, Push Not the River, we went through like 10 or 11 and, oh. and they my editor was terrific, and she always kept me apprised of the latest version. And then we got to like number ten, and it it was this gauzy sort of bluish cover. It looked like a romance novel um, cover. I, I showed it to my uh, uh, advanced placement class, and this girl in the back goes, "Romance novel." Oh man. <laughs> So I told them I didn't want it. And that's when I found out how much uh, influence I didn't have. They said, well, we know what we're doing. So, but then it went to the guy who disperses them and he does his homework. And he said, that's not the right cover for this book. And wow. 
then they came up with the what, what's almost the current cover that I have now for Person at the River. And you know, with, uh, uh, with a terrific, terrific uh, Emma Hamilton posing as um, one, of, one of the classic uh, characters. So um, now I was going to say, I have found where it says, and it says, um, I've allowed participants to share the screen. So I don't know what okay. more I can do. So All right. I don't so know. you can try it and see what happens, and we'll. Okay, we so I, I've got a few things to show and tell. I'll start with that uh, mosaic. Okay. Yeah. Let's see I if can we can get this to work. Da, da, da. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yay! We All did right. it, James. All right. So that's um, that's you know one of the mosaics that we're studying. That's Theodora. Yeah. And, uh, and explain mosaics. A lot of people don't realize how tiny those little pieces of, of you know, um, glass usually are. They're like yeah. a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch, right? Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. So. Yeah, very tiny. But it's that. That's a beautiful piece right there. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Do you know how big that is? How large um, that work is? It, it's up on up on a wall, you know, it's in a wall. Yeah. Um, um, and it, I believe it curves. So oh it, 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 it's pretty big. It's, well, pretty big. it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay. Oh, now let's see love that. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I lost you guys. Um, so let, let me do this while I'm... While I can I'm, hear you. Okay. Um, what are you seeing? I'm seeing the Byzantine picture the, okay. the, of a mosaic. All right. Well, let me, let me switch. And I can also see you in the screen speaking, too. Can okay. everybody else? I don't are, know. They may be on mute. Do you, do you see the different picture now? No, it hasn't Same. changed. No. But I can see each of you. Yeah, I can see him and, um, but um, I'm looking down here and seeing what this is. There's some other pictures at the bottom, but um, yeah, with they're other. coming up to the front for some reason. Okay. Um, shoot. Okay. I uh, see several, several of the paintings that are on the cover of Fortune's Child are, are down there. Yeah, they're on the bottom. All right, so but I clicked I that, but... I click that, but you guys don't see it large. Maybe if you no, stop. Uh, we just still see the one. I think you have to click on it down on the bottom of your screen. Okay, I did, but I have something else on my screen that is. What do you have on yours? It just says Zoom. I've got you off to the right. It says Zoom. Yeah. Big, big letters of Zoom. I uh, thought maybe if I clicked on one of them, they'd pop up, but no, nothing's happening. I think it has to come from your end. Yeah, what if you stop sharing and then okay, share? Okay, I got rid of that. So let's, let me stop, let me stop that. You know, the uh, one thing about technology, it's a learning process every day. It changes all the time. So uh, the fact that you got one picture up, I applaud your efforts. I think that's pretty amazing. All right, so the second one didn't come up for you? No, it's still got the one uh, in the Byzantine one in a blue box, but there's a whole bunch of images on the bottom. It's like you've tried to put them up there, but they're not going to the top. And I don't know how to do that. Any clue, Jeffrey? All right, all right. I had to do a stop share, I guess. I think that's the way to go back in and share again. Yeah, yeah. okay. Maybe if you stop each one and then go back. Yeah, all right. we'll try it. I mean, what do we got to lose? All right. How about? <laughs> oh, yay! There it is. There's the painting. It's beautiful. Yeah. What I love is it. It it's looks jewel like and metallic. You know, with all the mosaic wall and the big chest thing on the side and the opulent clothing and the the bedding on the bed. It's beautiful. So you might notice that um, she's not covered up like she is on the cover of my book. Oh, that's right. You're yeah. right. How did you uh, do that? 
because Amazon would probably not allow it. I knew that ahead of time. That's, I don't think that's true because I have, Carol Dawson did a book cover called Body of Knowledge and it had a nude woman on the cover. Really? really? Yeah, it did. Well, well, we covered her up. Uh, my okay. my, co well, my cover guy did that and it really looked, you couldn't looks, tell. Yeah, it, it, you can't tell. Kathy Ramsberger's here. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. And um, Marianne Henry is here. Yeah, hey, and you look at the painting on the cover. We've learned how to do, uh, you know, he's sharing um, art images for us. So from the book. Kath Kathy L. Murphy, am I showing up or not? Yes, I Marianne, see. you're here. I see you, Marianne. It took me forever to get into this meeting. <laughs> okay, well, welcome. Oops. Now I've got to let my dog in, but I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So be because it's a... Um, uh, the painting is wide, it's horizontal. Uh, we had to cut off Justinian over here, off to oh. the right, and the, and the, uh, the musical group behind him. Right. So we cut it off with the ladies in waiting. It's beautiful. So that's that. That's um, gorgeous. Thanks for all sharing. Right. While we're doing that, let me share the others. Okay. Um, uh let's see here comes, early, oh here we go early on I gotta put uh, my early on i discovered this on. book i don't know how i discovered it because it, oh you know, my gosh he only made a few of them and uh but i discovered it way back and she claimed that um she seemed to claim that they were actually reincarnated because they wow. were so, they were so, they had so many similarities. And Look at the eyes. Yeah. So, um, so many, the, the, you know, they they were poor. They became mistresses, actresses. Uh, the power behind the throne, loved by the masses, uh, sometimes hated by the masses, and. Um, um, and then uh, Ava became Santa Evita, and Theodora became a saint in the Eastern Church. Wow. Long, long Do you Justin. know who this Lucia Fisher Papp is? You know, I wrote to her like a couple of months ago because uh -huh. she's still alive. She's well into her 90s. Oh my gosh. She's a doctor, and she wrote back. And, you know, she, she was thrilled that, you know, the book helped, helped my book along a little bit. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. That's good oh, to know. Yeah. Where does she live? She is in, she's in the South now, and I think a retirement home. In um, the United States? Yeah, yeah, North, uh, um, Lindsey Graham, what state is he in? South Carolina, Carolina. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Beth. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I think North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no. Lindsey Graham is definitely South Carolina. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. I live in South Carolina. Okay. And North Carolina. He's in Charleston. All right. All right. So, um, coast to coast and around the world tonight. So good for us. All right. So, one last one. This is just okay. a mock. This is a mock up of my current work in progress. Oh. Uh, I'm planning. I'm, uh, uh, it, it's up in the air. I might get a big publisher. I might not. If I don't, this might be something like I come up with for a cover. Okay. Ooh, Napoleon's oh, shadow wife. Wow. Oh. Wow. I want to know more about this story. Yeah. So maybe at the end we we could talk a little bit about. That. Okay. All right. All right. So Very stop good. share. And I'll stop doing that. <laughs> For those who just came in, um, James has been telling us that this kind of started when he took an art appreciation course. And I go, he certainly learned something from that class because um, uh, the, I read a little of his writing and it's, it's a beautiful story. And for all of you that have not seen the cover of the book, he showed a painting of it, but it's beautiful. But all of your books are. 
I mean, you put a lot of thought into them and Fortune's Child and Push Not the River, they're great. So anyway, so where all have you been talking about this book? Have you gone? I mean, it's the time of COVID, so it's really hard to, to do a whole lot, you know, but I thought maybe up there, there might be some bookstores or libraries or. Uh, a, a couple of uh, fests. I've got a fest this um uh, this weekend here in Portland. Um, but um, yeah, I've, I've been quiet and quietly working on, on uh, Marie Valenska, uh, that novel. It's uh, it's going to be my longest, I think, unfortunately. Really? It's, it's just, Longer than some of these? Pushing yeah. the River was how many pages? Um, it was into I the like 500s. Big ones. I cannot lie. I like yeah. thick. It so. was into the 500s. Oh, so boy. Oh this boy. one might, depending on you know the print, it might be. Uh, but she was, uh, well, we can talk about her after. Uh, yeah. She's uh, an amazing person. And she was his favorite mistress. And, uh, well, you are in a writer's critique group. And how long have you been in that? James? Um, since, well, I was one in, in one in Chicago and I came here in 2014 and joined one. And uh, we met in the basement of a church or until COVID. And then yeah. we did, then we did Zoom. Yeah. And there, uh, a few people have come and gone, but it's been pretty steady. Uh, but the same, Good. same people, I just had them to my house uh, in, in, uh, July, uh, for a barbecue. You, are you, so, you're, so you're back meeting in person or still Zooming? We, we do a social in person, but we, we yeah. do our Zooms on every Saturday. So I'll tell you, everybody gets all upset about Zoom, but this is the only way I'd be talking to Suzanne Kamada and Kathy Ramsburg and you. I mean, I think it's the greatest invention ever because we can talk to authors and book club members all over the world. And, um, but, you know, my whole life revolves around this book club. So I know other people have other lives, but to me, this is living, is being a lifelong learner and having this book club. So it's my social hour. So I'm really glad you guys are all here. I, now that I'm back in school, you know, they're kids, you know, they're young enough to be my grandchildren. In fact, I had the guy next to me today said, um, you know, you remind me of my grandma's friend. She's always wearing stuff from India. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think so, Jason. But anyway, um, uh, I, I want to say the, the advantage of uh, doing the book club on Zoom yeah. is you can do what I just did. You can share your pages so you yeah. don't have to. You, uh, you don't have to just listen uh, as somebody reads their, you know, five pages around the table. Um, uh, so you, you can, can see, see the and, and that makes a big difference, especially, you know, I've got one, there's one poet in the group, so I need to see poetry. I can't just listen to it. That's really, and how many are in this group? Um, 10 to 12. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I know Robert. Gwaltney is in a group and I you know I got invited to be in one Marilyn Schwartz uh Simon not Schwartz Marilyn Simon Rothstein has a group in New York and they invited me to join their group but you guys I just don't have time <laughs> so I want to but I it just takes everything I have just to keep up with what I've got going on right now and um uh, but maybe later because I am back working on my book. But you, so it takes you a long time to write a book. But you know what? I always feel like a book is is something that if it's going to take a long time, it's going to be worth it, right? So, and it's worth it. So uh, this churning them out one a year, I don't know how people do it. I, honestly, I, I don't need they, they can't do anything else if that's all they do. Yeah. So uh, what is an average day for you as a writer? How does it begin? Um, the average day is how long do I procrastinate before <laughs> I go up uh, in the evening to write? Uh, okay. 
I have to do it. You know, even if it's an hour or two hours, I have to do it. But I procrastinate. So, and I'm a bit of a vampire and sleep late and get up and yeah, stay up late. go through the yeah. day. And, but then I write. So that, that's well, that's everybody has their own way. I get so sleepy at night and I can't do anything after eight or nine o'clock. I'm just, I go to bed and read. But um, so you do most of your writing late at night, but you do it every day. That is something you do every day. Yes. And does yes. it make you, does it make you um, more accountable by being in this writer's group too? Because you have to have pages to share, right? Right, right. But I'm, I'm ahead of them and that can get confusing when you're. Oh, are they <laughs> writing in the same type of genre or all different genres? It, it's a mix. We've got a science fiction person. We've got uh, a gothic poet, um, lots, lots of blood and vampires and stuff. Um, we have um, we have a couple historical fiction writers like like me. Um, we've got one that writes um, well. She writes stories, but she's also put out three books on on. Um, she's a doctor, so she's put out three books on. Uh, a writer's guide to medicine. Oh wow, that so, sounds you know, cool. For, for people who need to have their characters get sick or die or be killed, um, <laughs> you know, she's she's the one to go to. Oh, you know, Catherine Casey's our true crime writer, and she's got she talks about that a lot too. That's kind of fascinating. You know, I guess that's how they come up with all those unusual ways on that CSI to die. <laughs> yeah, and you want to get it right. So many people get it wrong, and, and uh, it, it's called it's called a writer's guide to medicine. Huh. Right. Well, Natalie. okay. If anybody's going to kill anybody off, that's the book to get, yeah. right? Or, or what kind of poison to use, and that sort of thing. So, volume one is on setting and character. So, each one is is you know uh -huh. addressing yeah. a different uh, writer's. That's really fascinating. And so you've been doing this since, since 2014? Yes. yes. And you meet once a month? Um, no, every Saturday. Every Saturday every on Saturday. Zoom. Every Saturday? On Zoom, yeah. Wow, these people are dedicated then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's that's helpful. And, you know, and you're, we have one person doing the autobiographical also. Wow. So it's a, it's a real mix. Well, you know, you need to tell them when they get their books done, they need to get me a copy so I can read them. I had that happen with Mickey, uh, Robert Gwaltney's friend. He sent me his book, and I couldn't put it down. I read everything. I'm, I'm all over the place. And so do you have any time to read besides um, write? Not enough. Not enough at all. No. So, I mean, it takes me forever to... Somebody will ask me, you know, to read a book for a blurb or something, and it it, uh, it, it takes a long time. Um, yeah, you should read a, uh, the Covenant of Water. It took me a long time to get through it, but boy, was it worth the wait. You know, uh -huh. so, Abraham Bernice's book. It's going to be on our list, but we have. Um, um, oh, we're going to have a big list. But if any of you guys are here and you have a new book coming out. You need to get it to me. And if you don't get it to me this year, remember um, next the next time it's our 25th anniversary. I can't hardly believe I've been doing this 25 years, wow. you know. Um, but then I look in the mirror and I go, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had a lot of fun, James, through the years. You were a former Timber Guy of the Year. And I think that you won the Sexy Reading Contest. Is that right? Is I that did. What happened? I do. I remember that. I remember it so well, and I remember uh, us taking that picture, and I remember meeting you out in Bellingham, and um, you know, it's the thing that I think people miss out when they're not in a book club is the journey that we've all taken together. Now, some of you haven't been with me as long, but we've still kept in touch. You know, Suzanne's almost here every week. Mary and I talk all the time. She's been so helpful for me and in getting into uh, 
I had to have three letters of recommendation to get into graduate school. So she helped me out there and I appreciate it so much. But I, I don't know what I do without my authors. What would be your advice that you would give to any new writer today, especially if they're interested in historical fiction? Uh, read. Yep. Re read the ones that are interested, the authors that they're interested in. Um, I probably got caught up in, in, with a lot of authors, uh, uh, latched onto a lot of authors through, uh, through teaching, through uh, yeah. E.M. Forster. I, I taught Howard Zinn. Some people thought I was crazy, but uh, it, it, I turned out, or, or the kids turned out, amazing term papers on Howard Zinn. You had, you had a celebrity you taught in high school that I could not believe. I just remembered this. Who was it you told me that you had in one of your classes? Was it at, when you were teaching high school? Um, high school, um, I didn't have her in class. Oh, you didn't have her in class. Unless she, she was, was in, in my creative school. writing and I don't remember. Uh, Chandra, um, come on. Right. The producer. The... Yes, yeah, of the Bridgerton, you guys. Right. You yeah, didn't have Chandra, Greta Gerwig in there, did you? Did you have Greta Ger Gerwig? What school was it you were teaching uh, at? Marion Catholic in Chicago Heights. Oh, in Chicago Heights. Yeah. Wow. Well, I follow both of those people now. I just, um, in fact, I have added uh, one of the Bridgerton books to as a bonus pick, pick, pick this year because I fell in love with the story of, of, of Queen Charlotte. I, I really love the storytelling in uh, the Bridgerton series. And, um, um, but I watch a lot of films too. Now, do you watch a lot of films besides, you know, the reading or uh, see, this would be a fascinating uh, film series because in India, cause I watch all the Bollywood films, they do all their history, every time period, every century they do, historical and there and it's such a great way to kind of open up that history that you didn't get in high school or even college so it is. Um, do you watch a lot of films um i i do haven't been out to the theater you know covid since covid uh, a couple of times since but i need to do it more um but yeah and i belong to netflix and um oh, prime yeah. and so, and usually they, they automatically throw the historical films at me. Um, but yeah, yeah, I watch a lot. So if anybody wants some good film series and films to watch, ask me. There's about four or five of my friends that we get on. Okay, what'd you see this week that was great? Because you get to a point where you've seen everything, you know? And uh, I fell down the, I don't know if you've seen that Suits, uh, series that was, I guess it was on television, but I don't get television. And uh, I, it's about this law firm. I found that, and I can't believe I found it fascinating, but it was. But I think this would be a wonderful film. If you have you ever thought about when you, if this was made into a film, who would play the characters? Um, no. It'd probably have to be several actresses playing different ages and stuff, but right, right. anybody come to mind when you were writing it? No, I, I played that game with Pushing Out the River, but uh, in fact, Betty Davis read it. Uh, Who did? Betty Davis. No yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> she, I, oh I met her at- Oh my gosh, she's my favorite. When, Man, when that I was a while back because she hasn't been around for some time. I know. Oh, Betty Davis. But when oh, it was in, when it was in manuscript form and and the editor was or the agent was sending it around, um, I I met her and she said she would read it and I sent it to her. I got a nice letter from her. Uh, How old was she at that time? She was um, upper sixties. Wow! She could have played the aunt, and that's so what I told what? her. And, and that's probably why she took the book. But uh, wow. it, it, it had many yeah. years to come to fruition. And yeah. 
he it's, didn't have time. It's interesting. I don't know who any of the young film stars anymore. In fact, I, I actually sometimes love to watch. That's why I like to read books because I imagine how they would be not like somebody else, but I imagine how they'd be. If you guys haven't seen The Great Seduction, uh, I think it's on Amazon. You got to watch it. It's it's uh, quite the story. But uh, back to your book. So you, it's taken you a long time to get it done. And now you're working on another book. How long do you think it's going to take to get it finished? Uh, I will finish it. Uh, the first draft. Uh, I'm I'm close to finishing the first draft. That's that's really good, because this would be a lot of homework. I mean, to learn all this, you know, the history and the way they talk, the di the voices that you have in this book are fascinating to me. Um, it's really I watched a um, a kind of a documentary on Cleopatra not too long ago, and it was a version I had never dreamed of before because they had her uh you know i always thought of her as egyptian but actually she was i think a mix of egyptian and african and it was really good it was produced it was done by um will smith's wife and it was very interesting you know i don't know how i don't know enough of the history to know of how true it was but i think you've done your story well i mean i think you've researched this well and you've got it down and kind of like it reminds me of uh the sagas like dr shivago you know the big sagas and you know the the distance place in the I just think it'd be fascinating. So I'm going to open it up and see if any of you guys have any questions for James uh, about the book, if you have read it, or if you haven't, you know, uh, ask away. This is your opportunity to talk to our International Book of the Month author. So anybody just speak up. Um, James, uh, you and I talked in Florida about my love of Theodora and um, I read parts of it to my son before he went to Turkey and, oh. and he, he, he's, he doesn't write my son, he, but he's like a trivia king. And he came back and he said, every, every single fact was right. And I just wanted to compliment you. <laughs> oh, wow. James, that's great. That's wonderful. And did Thank he you. go to Istanbul? Where'd he go? It into really, Russia? it really helped him get into um the the mood of of the mosque right it's uh -huh. a it wasn't a mosque then but you know what right, I mean right yeah. um when did he go when did he go yeah he was in turkey in um may uh, april or may okay and he didn't find it dangerous or anything mm -mm. he oh. loved Okay. He would come up to him and say he wanted to go into the earthquake zone, but he 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 was okay. too far south. He he's got my blood. What can I say? Uh -huh. <laughs> I used okay. to do the same thing when I was his age. Um, but um, that would have been the only dangerous place is where the earthquake was. Um, he met people all along the way that said, "Please, can we speak English to you?" Oh. Such a welcoming people. Very nice. Very nice. That's good to know. Maybe you'll have to go, James. I, I've wanted to, but I, you know, here and there, the politics have not been good there. Come with me. I have a lot of friends that have gone, and they said they had a wonderful time. Uh -huh. um, and um, I met two women in Nashville at the Southern Festival for the book, and they were going on a trip to Morocco. And I hope they got back before everything that just happened. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I'd love to go to both of those countries. They had, um, um, I find it all very fa fascinating. Morocco's um, gorgeous. Yeah. And that's, I've seen, you know, and uh, it's, it's, not what we 
is portrayed to us mm -hmm. because I watch a lot of these documentaries on um, Netflix and stuff on other countries. And oh my God, Iran is beautiful in parts of it. It's just beautiful. And I watched one in Afghanistan where they went to a bed and breakfast in Afghanistan. I was expecting rocks and caves. <laughs> and uh, no, it's, it was absolutely beautiful. It was about an artist. It was really a fascinating story. So, um, but it, did he ever, how long was he there, Kathy, your son? He was, he was in Turkey about, he, he was all over the place. He, he taught in Madrid and then he just started in Eastern Europe and worked his way up to the country of Georgia and uh, flew back from Georgia. He couldn't go any further because he would have hit Russia. So yeah. Uh, I think he was in Turkey two weeks, though. Wow, that's a that's, that's a good wow. That'd be fa fascinating. So yeah, he loved it. Good it was his story. favorite. Yeah. Anybody else have a helped him along? Huh? Go where? James's book helped him along. He he oh, was the story. He's dyslexic, and so he really has to be interested to to really deeply read something that isn't a calculus book. So uh -huh. a real compliment to your book. Thank you. That's Thank great you. to hear. I have a question. Yeah, Jeffrey. Um, Jim, you mentioned how you came upon Theodora, how you found her. How did you find, is it Napoleon's shadow wife? How did Marie you Valen yeah. Marie Valenska. Um, Actually, she she's a minor character in uh, the second of my poems. Hang on one second. Poetry. Who do you have a friend named Bay Singer? Yes, yes. Okay. Gary. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um, where was where was I? Um, After you found Maria Valenska. Yeah. Um. So she's she's a well known character. There there's a movie called Conquest with um. Um, Greta Garbo, um, she, Greta Garbo playing Marie Valenska. Hi, Gary. Oh. Hello. And um, hi. So, so she's she's well known. Um, and I found out more and more about her as I as I did that second book in the trilogy, and you know, so many of my of my core audience you know, are related to Poland and, and that. And so she just seemed to be a logical choice for, for, a, uh, for a book. She was uh, Napoleon's favorite uh, mistress. He called her his <laughs> Polish wife, which is where she kind of, in my book, calls herself the shadow wife uh, to Napoleon. Huh. And... Uh, he thought he was, uh, you know, he had mistresses, women coming after him for the power and, and the prestige. And, but she was very sincere, very real. And that's what he grabbed onto. Uh, he thought he was sterile and be, because he, he, Josephine had two children by her first husband, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, wasn't able to have children by Napoleon. And with his outside relations too, there were, there were no children that he knew of. So um, Marie Valenska proved him wrong. She, wow. She had his child, but uh, I'm giving away stuff here. But before, before she, uh, um, even before she gave birth, he married somebody else. He, he wanted this. He wanted a dynastic marriage. He, so he married the daughter of the man who had once been Holy Roman, Roman Emperor. And the only reason he wasn't Holy Roman Emperor now was because Napoleon uh, you know, did away with that. He left him as uh, Emperor of Austria. So, um, so he lost almost everything to Napoleon and including having to give away his daughter. Uh, wow. was another Marie, Marie Louise. So, but their relationship, his relationship, I'm into that part of it now, continued in certain ways 
uh, after he married uh, for his dynasty uh, that he imagined. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and she had his child and, and things continue. And that's all I'll give away. Okay, well, now you've got us wanting to go down that rabbit hole and find out what happened and everything. So, is this one of your writing critique people that just came? Yes, out yes, work? Gary. Yes. Hi, Gary. Welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. We Thank love you, he James. He does historical fiction as well. Oh, try to. What, what, what uh, time period? Uh, sorry, hold on. Adjusting my microphone. Um, there we go. Um, uh, World War II, I guess, mostly. But oh, okay. A little, little before and after yeah. that, too. We so, read yeah. everything. I was telling James, he needs to tell some of you all to get your books to us. So we, because we pick a book a month, we pick an international okay. book a month and bonus books. So, and we're reading all over the world. And we've got a bunch of the authors here tonight from, let's see, New Hampshire, Japan, Bellingham, of course, Bellingham is James, and Jeffrey's in Washington, D.C., so we're all over the place tonight. So, Kathy, do you still have openings for this year, or you're working towards next year? I'm or... still reading. I won't stop still reading, reading okay. until December 1st, so if you give me the book, go to Authors Join here on the website, www.thepulpwoodqueens.com, and um, it explains the crisis. It has my address where you send the book. I read our author members' books first in the order they come in. And I just got six this week. And uh, my daughter actually has gotten into reading. So she's helping me. And she was she was really excited. She goes, Mom, it's like Christmas. She goes, you get all these books? And I go, yes, I do. I do. And I enjoy every single one of them. I can't pick them all, but... The good news is that, you know, you hang with me for a while, I'll get you in. I just, you know, it just takes a while. Some people give up too early, but it's good things happen to those who wait because we have uh, quite the lineup for Girlfriend Weekend this year. We've got a lot of New York Times bestselling authors, a lot of newbies. So uh, I'm really excited about all who's coming. So you can stop on the website. And if you have any questions, just email me at the pulpitqueen at gmail.com and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Kathy, what, when what I get was the email school, address again? Because I'm going to graduate school right now, so I don't get around to much till I get back <laughs> home at night. But anyway, it's great to have you here. We the, the more people that come on board, the more excited we all get. Isn't that right, everybody? Yeah. Nice. Kathy, what was that address again? The email address or website address? It's, www.thepulpwoodqueens.com. The Pulp of Queens. And Pulp we have timber guys too. And in fact, James was one of our timber guys of the year when you're at Girlfriend Weekend. He got crowned. We had a sexy reading contest and he won. So that was. And that, that was reading the telephone book, wasn't it? <laughs> I was something crazy like yeah. that. I don't have them read anything really that sexy. One year I had them read Good Night Moon. That was last year, wasn't it? I think they read Good Night Moon. One year it was John Grisham's, um, uh, the one about the little boy who grew up with his uncles on the farm. There was nothing, <laughs> nothing sexy about it. But the guy who read it made it so. So anyway, we just have fun. We just we just want to show people that reading is the best entertainment in the world. It's also the most enlightening and educating, and it broadens our views of the world, right? We are building bridges. So we welcome you to come. We do this every Tuesday night. It sounds like you're pretty busy if you're busy working, you know, meeting every Saturday night. So, but we meet every Tuesday and it's up on the website, the link. So it's pretty easy to find us, join us and everything. Anybody else have any comments? I I have a question for you. Gary. Oh, yeah. Well, I wonder, I'm a World War II uh, fiction fan. I just wondered, I, do you, is it um, British? Is it a, a, something else? Is it home front? Is it spies? Is it the, the actual front line? I wonder what you were writing. 
Oh, um, hmm. Well, the the book I'm working on now that I'm gonna that's not published yet is is kind of a spy thing. But the first book uh -huh. that I wrote, which is coming out uh, next week, um, it's a family saga. My my ancestors are Alsatian, so I kind okay. of we'll work, work that whole thing into it about a family that's kind of reunited and um uh, basically on the battlefield on opposing opposing soldiers on a battlefield who come together don't don't know that they're related but kind of figure it out later so uh, it's more uh, battlefield battlefield there's focus. some of that yeah but there's other stuff it, it's i mean it starts before world war ii and goes for several years afterwards mm -hmm. um actually it starts yeah. back in alsace in like 8 1790 and then we jump forward so it's a little little bit of everything um, okay it's really it, good well, yeah, it's, Jim has said I'm some very big kind World things about it. Fan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We've done yeah. a lot of World War II books. So you need to send it to Kathy. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And I just want to yeah. say, having Jim in my writers group is great because he's a former English teacher and he is on it. You know, as far as getting no great kidding. advice. Uh, he's a, a good guy and he's a great writer. And I, I think your group, it's large for writers group, you know. Um, but do, do, does everybody come every week? Mostly, Just, mostly, mostly, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that means they're serious about the writing. You know, anybody that comes every week, like Suzanne and James is here a lot and Catherine, I mean, you know, when you come every week, you guys really are serious about writing. You're making an investment and I appreciate it. And uh, I can't thank y'all enough for coming tonight and uh, joining me. It's it's a lot of fun. And uh, what's your favorite thing about the book club, James? Well, our, our socials are fun. Yeah, uh, they are. Uh, we do crazy things. And yeah. I've got some pretty good surprises this year. People are going to go, oh, Kathy, what? They just never know what I'm going to do because I have to... Um, you know, I go to all these book festivals and I have to, I hate to tell people this, but so many of them are really boring. I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> like you know, paint, you know, and I, but if you get a good writer and they're reading their story like James, I'm on the edge of my seat. You know, I heard Ben Fountain and Ron Rash and I heard the man who wrote the story about um, Harper Lee last time I went to Nashville. Oh my gosh, I could have listened to him for weeks. But, um, you know, most people that um, are readers are introverts. So I have to do some stuff to kind of get, stir people up and get them dancing on the dance floor, dancing on the Zooms. And um, this year, I, I will tell you that uh, I went and saw Barbie, the movie Barbie, with my daughter. And I've never been so shocked in my life uh, about the woman who wrote this story. And then my best friend came down, who happens to be a public queen from Kansas, and I took her to it for my birthday. And she goes, my God, that movie. So we decided we had a Barbie party years ago for one of the anniversaries. So we're going to do um, the author meet and greet is going to become as your favorite Barbie because, you know, Barbie and Ken can be anything. So you can be author Barbie, you can be book club Barbie. Yeah, and some uh, one of my artist friends said her and her girlfriends in Alabama all went to the show and they went as artist Barbies. And uh, but you can be you know James Conroy Martin as a Kindle. So we're we're just going to have fun with it, and um, and that's how we'll introduce the author in their book and then say, and what Ken or Barbie are you? And, you know, and there's always a story. And this so, is this is on Zoom this year. Yeah, it's going to be on Zoom. So you don't have to really dress anymore from the, from the waist up. <laughs> you can have it on your Ken swim trunks for all I care, because all we see is, you know, the upper, <laughs> upper part. But uh, whatever you want to do, it's going to be fun. I, I'm hoping and I'm praying that the 25th will be live in Texas because that's where it all began. And um, I've got 
a really great host lined up, I think, crossing my fingers for the 25th. It's a fellow Texan, brand new as a host. But Jeffrey Lawrence Matthews from Florida, who also writes kind of, I don't even know how to describe Jeffrey's book, but it's uh, Jeffrey's book um, uh, is the story of if Abraham Lincoln um, got to work a case with um, 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 Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes. I couldn't think of it right off. And I was just going, and his next, his next, I have another author that's coming out with a book about a Mexican Frankenstein. And I go, oh, I've got to read that. I, I, these people that are starting to really think outside the box and they're very creative in their writing. But uh, uh, Daniel Olivas, he is, he does a lot of Mexican magic realism and mythology. So this will be perfect. But anyway, we've got um, uh, Jamie Ford's coming, Lisa C. Um, Debbie Rodriguez is coming from Mexico. I've got uh, uh, Abbott Kohler's coming from New York City and Marilyn Simon Rothstein. I've got the Bernhardts, William Bernhardt's a New York Times bestselling author and his wife, Laura, are coming from Oklahoma City. Um, we're going to have people from everywhere and I'm hoping all of you guys will be there and uh, we'll, you know, because I don't know how long this is going to go. I'm going to ride this pony till it drops, but um, I've had a ball doing it and uh, um, it's, it's, this is my hobby, you know, I, it's a hobby that's become my life's mission. So uh, you probably won't know what to think, Gary, but you'll be uh, highly entertained, I guarantee you. And you'll hear some terrific authors. Jamie, uh, when he, he emailed me on my birthday, he was coming. I go, oh, my God, because his book has now sold over, is it two million copies? His new one, The Many Lives of May Fong Wong. I think it's that, and he's coming. So, and Lisa C., oh my gosh, she's coming from Calif in from yeah, California. I just, I just read her book. Her her mother, yeah, she's, she has been um, one of my authors for years, and I actually did a television show with her in Beverly Hills in Pasadena uh, called The Beauty and the Book Show, where I had my own TV show, and I finally got her coming back, and she is lovely. And she's a great writer, and so is her mother, Carolyn C., and uh, she'll be coming in, and it's just going to be great. And I'm working on a few other surprises. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they'll, they're going to be coming, too. But um, anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, James, is there anything you want to share with every, somebody if they, um, before we leave about um, uh, the writing process or a writer's life or words of wisdom, my friend? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, um, I was going to say Jamie Ford had to change um, uh, companies uh, in order yes. to get his current book published. They, I know. You know. Thinking out of the box. You know, he was thinking out of the box and they... And they, he hit, he right. scored big time, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So his former company is probably you know, crying in their milk. Well, um, you know... Publishers need to learn to invest in their authors because when you invest in them, you can get the best work. If they're always a fear of they're going to be dropped, you know, that's, that's just not fair. You know, yeah. I just don't think it's fair. I think pick an author that you can see grow with you and we'll have better writing. I'll tell you the books I've gotten this year have been just over the top. I mean, I've already, Lessons in Chemistry is going to be one of our books. Kathy Ramsberger's new book is going to be one of our books. I'm working on Suzanne Kamada. I've got um, um, uh, the Abraham Verghese um, Covenant of Water. Oh, my goodness. Um, what are some, I've got my one whole couch in my living room is covered with um, just my selections that I pick so far because I pick about 50 books and then I have to, I've got a few too many on there, but I usually pull out and put back in. But if you've been with me, I'm going to stick with the ones that get you on the list. So um, 
anyway, it's going to be a great list. You guys are going to be amazed. And uh, I can't thank you enough, James, for taking time out of your writing schedule to join us. Any last words from anybody tonight? Thank All you. All I've got to say is, yes, Marianne, what, did, what were you going to say? I just said thank you. Well, thank you for coming. And <laughs> school's going great. I'm in my fourth week. All right. I am having a wonderful time. I was telling them all earlier, I'm the oldest person on this campus. Yay. Absolutely the oldest person here. So enjoy it. But it keeps me young. You know, that's all I've got to say. It keeps me young. So you guys have a wonderful a week and get your copy of Too Soon the Night. Beautiful, beautiful cover. And for everybody out there listening, uh, if you want to join our book club, just go to thepulpwoodqueens.com or just type in the Pulpwood Queen. You won't believe what all is going to pop up when you do because we're everywhere. So thank you, James. Um, enjoy. All right, thank you. Service. And thank you, everybody, for stopping by. And keep blogging because, um, you know, uh, we want to hear more about your story, okay? All right. All right. Bye. Thanks, Gary, Marianne, Catherine, Jeffrey. Who did I miss? Suzanne. Thank Bye. You. Bye, everybody. Love to y'all. It's all about the story. Bye-bye. Yeah.